Imagine for a moment, there is a secret so powerful, it could change the course of your life, and perhaps even your afterlife. This secret isn't written in any book. It can't be Googled or found on social media or uncovered in some forgotten subreddit. It's passed down only through whispers, symbols, and rituals shared only among a select few who have proven themselves worthy. Now, ask yourself, would you want to know this secret? Would you do what it takes to be one of the chosen? From torchlit caves in ancient Greece to wood-paneled lodges of the New World, many people seeking hidden knowledge have answered yes to those questions and were drawn into a shadowy world, one of mystery cults and secret societies and exclusive communities. What they found has been largely lost to time and history. But there is a secret I can share with you right now. We're all, in our own way, just a little bit culty. And today, as we approach Halloween, a time when the veil between the worlds grows thin, we're going to explore just a little bit of why. The truth is, my wife and I love cults. <laughs> As ordained ministers, I'm not sure we're supposed to say that out loud. <laughs> but whatever, it's true. But when we take long car trips, like we did last week on our way to officiate my cousin's wedding down in southern Virginia, we get a lot of time to catch up on podcasts. Uh, one of my wife's favorites is called A Little Bit Culty. Anybody heard this podcast before? It's pretty fun. The uh, hosts are survivors of the Nexium cult. Anybody know that one? Nexium. Uh, Nexium was active for about 20 or so years. Uh, they taught some very highly regarded uh, self empowerment workshops, and they did it to tens of thousands of people worldwide. Unfortunately, that's not all they're known for. Uh, some of you may know that their leader, Keith Ranieri, was very recently, like in the last year, convicted of a whole host of crimes, including identity theft, extortion, forced labor, money laundering, wire fraud, obstruction of justice, and sex trafficking. Now, Nexium is only one of the many cults we've explored through podcasts. Or uh, if you happen to be so, in, so inclined, you can also do, join us on our little explorations through Netflix documentaries. Uh, wild, Wild Country. Anybody know that one? Wild, Wild Country. That's a good one. Uh, this takes up the story of Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh, who some of you may know as Osho. Uh, Osho taught his thousand-plus followers that the key to happiness on earth was free love and communal living. And that's why they bought a town in Oregon and tried to poison the locals. Keep Sweet is another we've watched. This one on the fundamentalist Mormon leader Warren Jeffs. Anybody know this one? Yeah. Jeffs led a splinter group, large splinter group, that attempted to resurrect the practice of plural marriage because they believed that the afterlife has achievement levels. And polygamy was the key that unlocks the highest, the best, and the most rewarding heaven. The group has been accused of many things, including sex trafficking, rape, and neglect. Jeffs himself is currently serving a life sentence for sexual assault. Of course, there are a lot of other cults. I'm fairly certain that some of you have your favorites, and I'm pleased to report that there, the many streaming options that are out there have us all covered. <laughs> and I'll admit it again, I am curious. Part of the allure, at least to me, is that I guess I just don't really get it. How do people not know they're in a sex cult or a doomsday cult or some scam how do they not know? 
The more rational side of me says, well, it's complicated. Cults may not start out creepy. Maybe they don't feel culty until it's too late. And to be fair, cults do many positive things for their members. Ex-cultists talk of a sense of belonging, of being adrift in a lonely world, and of their time in the cult as a sort of coming home. Come to think of it, I'm pretty sure some of our more orthodox neighbors here in town would look at us, Unitarian Universalists, and have some raised eyebrows. Yeah. There is no approved definition of this word, cult. Experts use the word to refer to a lot of different things. But generally speaking, they're referring to a specific kind of group, one that is unorthodox in its beliefs, one that chooses to remain at least somewhat apart from mainstream society, that exercises some kind of social control over its followers, and that venerates a particular charismatic individual. <laughs> kind of sounds like our church, right? <laughs> I'm kidding. One of the hallmarks of cultiness are foundational beliefs that are not questioned, answers to big questions that don't get challenged, and people that are always obeyed. And on these criteria, Unitarian Universalism is the poster child for whatever the opposite of cult is. The anti-cult, that's us. But there is something about what we do that church does that is cultish. Churches offer community, solidarity, a way and a place to make a big scary world a little more manageable. Here at UUSG, we say we don't have answers, but we do have a willingness to share and to walk each other through life's challenges and uncertainties. And we know that for those that, who never find us or find anything like us, for those for whom the world is too big, too scary, too dangerous, there are other options. And maybe that explains why, despite all the podcasts, documentaries, and warnings, there are always more cults and why there have always been cults. In fact, when you look at history, cults are everywhere. Go back far enough and you find that the ancient world was home to some of the most influential and mysterious of them, the cult of Demeter, part of whose story we heard earlier today was one of these. Eleusis was a small town outside of Athens. It's actually now a suburb of Athens. But from about 1500 before Common Era, right, BCE, up to 392 of the Common Era, so about 2,000 years, the follower, followers of the Eleusinian Mysteries celebrated the circle, the cycle of life and death and rebirth through worshiping the changing seasons. For the curious, this cult had millions of followers across the Roman Empire. We have some clues that tell us that some of those followers were offered more. In fact, we know that these special few could be from any class, any nation, any background, any level of privilege, egalitarian, at a time when that was not a thing. And through a series of initiations, sacred rituals, and secret magic, acolytes learned that while death itself was inevitable and unavoidable, their hereafter, the one that they could enjoy, did not have to be cold and gray and pointless. Initiates could earn themselves a better, more comfortable heaven. It's pretty tempting. And the Eleusinian mysteries were not the only option available if you were curious. I suspect some of you would have been very drawn to the mystery cult of Dionysus, the god of wine and fertility, 
I'll let you imagine what those celebrations were like. <laughs> Scholars believe that special initiates got a bit more than the standard debauchery. Instead, we believe they may have had rituals featuring wine infused with psychedelics so that participants could touch the cosmic, the eternal, to see God, to see past the ordering of the human world, the natural world, and to embrace, if only for a moment, the hidden chaos that lurks underneath the calm surface of things the rapturous and the ecstatic and the immortal that exists trapped within all of creation. And let's not forget the mystery cult of Mithras. Deep in hidden caves, soldiers and veterans of the ancient world from different tribes, different regions, different cultures came together and broke bread. Initiation and ritual helped these men shed the horror of their violent lives and find acceptance, understanding, peace, and community in a common purpose. What purpose? To commit their life and all of their future reincarnations to fight in the eternal war against an evil that was alive and awake and moving in this world. If that sounds a bit like a mystical fraternity of superheroes, it totally was. <laughs> and it was immensely popular across the Roman Empire. Anybody have some part in their life, something that they've done that had a secret handshake? Anybody? Secret handshake. You don't have to admit this now. You can, you can save that for later. Right? something from a fraternity or a lodge club or something like that. The cult of Mithras is where that came from. Now, these ancient cults offered answers to eternal questions, questions that have haunted humanity down through the ages, questions that a lot of us here today still have, questions like, what is the nature of reality? What is my purpose in this life? What happens after I die. Now, <clears throat> despite what Dan Brown in his 2003 novel, The Da Vinci Code, might suggest, these ancient mystery cults did not survive into the modern age. Sorry about that. Christian exceptionalism did not permit that. To be a Christian meant that you could not be anything else. And so, as Christianity rose to power within the empire, the pagan mystery cults were ended. But that's not to say that Christians did not have their own mysteries. We know that from the earliest days of the Christian faith that there were disagreements. We also know that this particular fact was very annoying to Emperor Constantine, who wanted to use Christianity to reunite a splintering empire under a common banner. What Constantine found was that the Christians of what is now Turkey were quite different from the Christians in Egypt and Greece. And it seems that some of these early Christian groups freely blended their beliefs with their experiences in mystery cults. And that may be why a great many early Christians across the Roman Empire believed that the true gospel message of Jesus was hidden. That there existed special knowledge that once known gave special power. Power to transcend the limits of human suffering. Power to achieve life everlasting. Power to know the mind of God. Today, we call these groups by the collective term Gnostics, after the Greek word gnosis for knowledge. Some Gnostic Christians taught that the world, the flesh, was illusion. Others, that the world had been created by the devil, or that the life of spirit was the only one that was good and worthy to live. While Gnosticism was mostly written out of Christianity by the fourth century, mystics down through the ages have rediscovered sacred Gnostic insights. For those of you familiar with the Jewish mystical tradition of Kabbalah, it has a lot in common with Christian Gnosticism. 
Now, <clears throat> many of you are justifiably tantalized and titillated by the promise of special knowledge, the spectacle of hidden rights, the powers and privileges of initiation, the benefits of solidarity, community, aid and support, and let's not forget the sweet secret handshakes. But some of you may be thinking, hey, that sounds a lot like my college fraternity or sorority. It's true, it should. But you can go farther back than college. You can go back to the earliest known gathering of the Freemasons in 1599. Imagine, if you will, a group of skilled artisans and craftspeople coming together in secret to celebrate and share the mysteries of mathematics. <laughs> right. Sweet, right? A math cult. Just remember that <clears throat> in the Middle Ages, geometry may well have seemed magical. Now, over the centuries, the Freemasons became many things and inspired many groups. The Bavarian Illuminati, whom Dan Brown was very taken by, as well as the very first college fraternity, the secretive and selective Phi Beta Kappa. That was founded in 1776. A few years later, uh, Yale founded the Skull and Bones Society on the same model. Now, it's not clear what came first, accusations of Satanism or a secret societies that actually explored the dark and the occult, but whatever. By the end of that century, by the end of the 19th century, that is, the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, a group very much inspired by Jewish Kabbalah, was actively exploring alchemy, astrology, and yes, ritual magic. For those of you keeping track, this group and others like it are where we uh, where our modern neo-pagan traditions come from. I don't think it's weird to find a thread connecting ancient Greece to modern college campuses. There is and always has been a longing for connection, of meaning making, for some special key to, make, under, to understand what's real, what's important, what's true. It's a very short step from questioning to wondering if our ancestors might have known something that has since been lost or hidden from our modern view, something our all-too-human heart sings its lonely song for, something we want and need, something we'd sacrifice for. Who here is not just a little bit culty? And that brings me to QAnon. QAnon was totally a cult. There was secret knowledge that the world was being run by a cabal of blood, let me see if I got this right, blood drinking pedophile Hollywood liberal elites. So it's a lot, right? There was this mysterious prophet named Q who revealed the true meaning uh, that was hidden behind current events. And everyone who interpreted Q's messages were joined by a sense of community and shared purpose. They were bananas, but they were definitely culty. And while the QAnon phenomenon has largely fallen apart, it speaks to a current idea in modern politics that is still dancing along an ever more dark, dangerous, and manipulative line. This is a theme we'll come back to in a couple of weeks when we talk about Christian nationalism, but let me bring today's little exploration home. Thanks to Google and YouTube, it takes very little effort to claim, to find, to uncover those who claim special knowledge about the world. Those who would offer comfort and community, if only to a narrow few. Some of them are very serious. Some of them are predatory. Wariness is warranted. Like you, I long for understanding, to know my place, to be a part of something larger than myself. And as I wander, I listen for the sirens singing their ancient and deadly song. I watch helplessly as far too many of our family and friends steer themselves toward the rocks of hate and separation and despair. But we got to remember, all of us, all of us are uncertain before mystery. We are, all of us, looking for a way home. In a world that feels increasingly fragmented, searching for the kind of community that can 
hold us through the mysteries and challenges of life. It's not weird or even unusual. We all crave something deeper than the surface level connections of a digital age. It's a universal thing. Ancient mystery cults promised answers to the very real, very immediate questions of human mortality. But I like to believe that we moderns might know at least a little better that the secret to life and death and life after death doesn't need a secret invitation or a secret initiation. It's open to all of us. We here hold that the key is choosing to live before death. That the best rituals lead to the building of community, the fostering of love, and the creation of meaning right here and right now. And as we stand on the cusp of Halloween, when the veil between the past and the present, between the known and the unknown, between the worlds of the living and the dead, are said to thin and tear, we should pause. Take this time to consider the mysteries that surround us still. Not the supernatural mysteries of ancient rites or even our more modern superstitions, but instead to accept the invitation into the profound mysteries of existence itself. If it helps, imagine, if you will, gathering in a moonlight grove or in a torchlit cave hidden in the hills or even in the dappled light of this very sanctuary. But instead of reclaiming hidden knowledge from capricious gods, we choose to gather to confront the greatest mysteries of all, the vast, unfathomable universe that birthed us, the intricate dance of matter and energy that forms our very being, the vast web of human connections that hold us and sustain us, and the fleeting, precious nature of our own existence. These are the true mysteries, my friends. They need no secret handshakes or hidden rituals to evoke our respect and awe. We simply need to wake up. As the poet W.B. Yeats taught us, quote, the world is full of magic things, patiently waiting for our senses to grow sharper. Like the ancients who sang and drank under moon and stone, we also seek transformation. Now, knowledge jealously guarded, but from open minds and hearts courageously facing the unknown and doing the best that we know how. Together. We who are gathered here are initiated not into exclusive brotherhoods, but into the grand family of humanity. Our rituals are acts of kindness. Our symbols are outstretched hands. Our secret password is simply, I care. And yes, there is darkness. There are shadows. There are things that go bump in the night of our souls. But we do not need to fear them. For in community, we get to face them together. We get to bring them into the light of reason, compassion, and our shared human experience. So this month, as jack-o'-lanterns flicker and the shadows dance in the dark places, remember, Everyone you meet is seeking meaning, belonging, and transcendence. The question is, as it always was, how will we pursue these desires? Let us choose. Let us choose to create today and every day a community where the only initiation is into greater compassion, where the deepest mysteries, the profound and boundless potential of human goodness, where the most amazing rituals are hands joined to make a difference in this world. And as we step out into that October chill, let the shivers run down your spine and let them remind you not only of ghosts and goblins, but this amazing journey that we get to do together. A journey into the heart of life's greatest mysteries, armed with reason, warmed by compassion, and united in diversity. For in the end, the most magical incantation, the most powerful spell we can cast, the secret that can change the course of our lives is our covenant, our promise to live fully, to love freely, to face the big questions and the great unknown with curiosity and courage. Welcome 
one and all, to the greatest mystery cult of all, our unending quest to create a more just, more loving, and more wonder-filled world. The mysteries await. Amen and blessed be. Visit us at uusg.org.